Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, the remaining, <laughs> the remaining quarter. Um, the UK tech ecosystem is worth. Uh, at the end of 2022 was worth almost a trillion dollars, and that puts us third in the world, um, just behind uh, the US and China. That is also, when you look at the, over the last 10 years, it was 53 odd billion 10 years ago. And that is an enormous exponential curve. And we are proper world leaders in, in tech. It's, like, it's, our, it's our biggest deal. There's also a massive skills gap, as there was in 2012 when I started um, my, my journey into, into this world. Uh, and there still is now, because we're just getting bigger. The UK is a, uh, is a tech ecosystem just getting bigger. So uh, hello, I'm Chris Bin. I'm the CEO, founder of the Coders Guild. And this is really where the Coders Guild comes in to, to satisfy that skills gap um, uh, and help out. It was started um, uh, more than a decade ago as, a, as, a, as an industry-led project. So we have this. Um, slogan, if you like, industry-led, community-driven. So me and a bunch of other developers wanted to fill the gap that we had with people coming out of uni with a computer science degree, not knowing what we needed them to know in order to build digital products. So we come together and we, what we did was we effectively we formulated the first draft of what would become uh, the, the, the standard for level four software development as an apprenticeship. Apprenticeships did exist back then when we started and we did get funding for, through, the, um, through the DFE, the ESFA, to, to deliver that as an apprenticeship. But we were doing things outside of that apprenticeship standard or the framework as it was then in order to fulfill actual industry needs. So if we jump forward uh, to, to now, to 2024, the Coders Guild now exists as a, a proper company rather than, uh, rather than a hobby project of me and some other developers. And we've expanded from software development into all of the things that surround digital product development. Um, we also haven't just stopped with apprenticeships. We do digital skills boot camp training. We do uh, consultancy and training for, uh, for other firms. But apprenticeships is where, uh, where we started from, and that's what all of the other things that we try and do is to make uh, apprenticeships the go-to path for people who are, who are wanting to build digital products. Um, the community-driven part as well, in the, like following on from that project, is where, where we are at um, wanting to deliver value back to the communities that we operate in, which is, um, can be the technical communities, but also uh, geographic or, or demographic. And we partner with lots of other um, important institutions and, uh, and organizations to, to help deliver on that. Now, when we think about tech roles, people are always going into straight into the, it's all about code. It's very, actually very little about code. Even the coding jobs are only about 10% code. Like, uh, like our man from KPMG was saying, like, you don't get a calculator out that often. He's still an accountant. The code that you do is only a small part of the job. And actually, there's a lot more in, uh, in the roles. Uh, the, and the, the surrounding roles in particular, you're a software tester or a data analyst or working in, in cybersecurity or, um, or DevOps or project management. All these things are really essential to the production of, the, of that tech economy and, the, and, and producing digital products. Um, the, the apprenticeships work really, really well for tech because it, it, all of those, the, uh, you know, the, the career options or the job roles that I was talking about then, they are all um, aligned much more with a skills trade than they are with something that you can learn academically and then put into practice. The things that we, that we do in building digital products are very much a, a learned skill. There's knowledge and skills. And that's why when you look at how an apprenticeship is, um, is formulated in knowledge, skills, and behaviors, those are the important things for actually building products, much more important than being able to write an essay about the history of computing or, uh, or, or things like that. Um, some, I've, got, I've got this slide here of extra things that you get from doing an apprenticeship over um, taking or going down the, the university route, um, networking is a, is a really is a really big part of it. 
Um, you heard from some of their apprentices today. You know, they've they've come out of school or out of college and into an apprenticeship, and they're worried about the you know the 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 perception from outside is oh you've just gone into work and you're not getting that social aspect. But networking is a huge huge part of being an apprentice. You often you're working with not just the people in your firm, but you'll be in a cohort of apprentices that are working in in similar fields to you, but in different firms. So like building up that network of people is super important for your future career and the earlier you start doing that the better um, there's the other obvious ones that we all know about they'll earn while you learn you're not coming out with a massive debt uh, you've actually got money in your pocket even though it's not um, you, know, you don't often go into um, mega bucks straight away being an apprentice but you do find in the technical roles that you are going to be paid better than you might expect from an apprenticeship like often the the skills and uh, or the things that you're learning as an apprentice they have business value quicker so you're not you come into a graduate scheme or something and you've got to you know you've got to learn loads of different things about a business before you can be useful from with an apprenticeship certainly the ones that we do is you're going to get those skills as soon as you start as soon as you start we'll be looking to skill you up with things that are valuable to the business so you get to um uh, you get the, the potential to earn more money um, quicker. Um, the mentorship and support, I think that, that's something that's really, really important to us in that you, as an apprentice, you are going to have mentorship through the course, through, through us as the training provider, but also in the workplace, there are going to be people there who will mentor you. And a lot of these mentor-mentee relationships continue way, way past the apprenticeship, where you have people who might move on to different companies, but, but they still have that, maintain those relationships. You might, 10 years down the line, still be having uh, the odd meet-up or the, or the uh, you know, phone conversations or whatever with, uh, with a previous mentor. Um, there's a lot of uh, perceived barriers, I think, to a, to a career in tech. People thinking that they can't do it because they, didn't, they weren't good at maths at school or um, you know, they didn't have very science-y GCSEs or A-levels. And the fact of the matter is, is that the maths that you learn at GCSE and A-levels is not the sort of maths we do in programming. So you don't really need those, um, you don't need those, those specific academic qualifications to do, to do well. Um, some other things that are, that are really, really important for the people hiring in, in tech world are these like core skills, core qualities that, um, that are super important. And these are things that you don't really, uh, you're not really taught in school, you're certainly not marked against how good you are at them, but these are things that are learned um, and can be improved, but also things that are very transferable from other careers or, for, or just from being alive and being aware of being alive, right? So being a good communicator, being able to collaborate with people, um, working on group projects, mm -hmm. having empathy is a, is, is a really, really important thing. You know, as a, um, my previous career as, a, as someone leading technical teams, I'm looking for people who can empathize with users, with other people in the team, with the testers, with the designers, because it's that understanding of other people's jobs that actually gets to build really, really good products. Um, curiosity as well is uh, super important in, in quality assurance and, uh, and testing. Um, uh, problem solving. Uh, problem solving is kind of the thing that, that everyone that, that's all uh, assumed, but it's a thing that actually you get better at with practice. And you don't, you can't read books about problem solving to get better at problem solving. You've got to solve problems. So, Trying to get into a tech career, where, where, where to start? Now, online, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of opportunity to get uh, stuck into stuff before you get before you go into an apprenticeship. Um, Ministry of Testing there, Learn Python, Free Code Camp, Scrimba, Khan Academy. There's absolutely loads and loads of free resources to learn to code, to learn to test, to learn project management, to learn how to use digital tools, how to use AI. If you know if YouTube is is a great place to start learning anything at all, um, and you really you know you, you if you start out on a journey and you start figuring out what it is that interests you and what you want to learn about, there's definitely free resources for learning everything. That is uh, is definitely a place to start. Not only because 
you get to check whether you're on the right path and uh, and what you're learning is interesting to you you're also proving to employers that you have that capacity for self-led learning and you are going to keep learning which is a, which is what most of the employers are looking for um there is also uh, free courses available um skills connect uh and uh, and future goals uh, you if you look uh, look them up they're, they've got a stand here as well but they also have uh skills boot camps and stuff where you can get free training that would put you into uh in towards an apprenticeship we are running uh two of them at the moment we have one for uh, project management with AI and digital tools, um, another one for software developers, which is JavaScript and, uh, uh, and version control, things like that. So you can do a course like this that will then set you up really, really well for, um, for getting an apprenticeship. It will give you a lot of the, the skills that you would be initially taught at, taught with the, through an apprenticeship. Um, so you can go in to an employer having already proved that you've got, that you've got some of that skills and knowledge already. There are, there's a page on our website dedicated to this event, which has a list of, a list of places to, to learn to code for free. There's also case studies of people who have been through skills boot camps or through apprenticeships um, with us uh, and with other people, and the list of resources as well for, for extra learning, um, and some blog posts and some other info. Uh, so you can zap that QR code or um, go and ask us at our uh, stand downstairs or coders guild slash laugh i've got some top uh tips for starting to uh, to you know to drive your own journey into a, a career in tech um one is about finding a specific area of interest so something that you can talk about because people won't expect you to go into an apprenticeship knowing everything but they will want you to know something they'll want you to be interested in something and that is such a, an advantage when you're being interviewed for, for positions. If you can talk about a thing that you are really, really interested in, doesn't need to be massive, doesn't need to be difficult, but people will respond really, really well to that interest, your interest in a thing, you driving yourself forward. Um, also being aware of the transferable skills that you have. Everybody has transferable skills. Everybody's got examples of um, when, they've, when they've worked well in a team or where they've solved a problem. And that it's good to think about those sorts of things and include them in, uh, in job applications um, because then you can drive the conversation of an interview around those things rather than what the interviewer wants to talk about, which inevitably can come down to um, skills that you may or may not have. So giving those examples and thinking about those transferable skills is really um, a really important tip. Um, taking care with your digital reputation, people will look you up. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone tells you this uh, these days, but people who are interviewing you for uh, for a job are going to look for you online, and they're pretty good at it. So, a thing that you once did that you maybe have forgotten about, <laughs> make sure it's disappeared before you start applying for jobs, because they can they can pop up and uh, uh, and scupper your chances. Um, a side hustle is a really, really good way to learn things. So, if you have a thought about a a hobby or a a project or uh, something that you can build something about you know build a website or run a server for games or have an online community or a group or something any sort of thing like that is a, is a real big big advantage to um, to getting started with a career in tech because it's gonna put you above a lot of the other people being interviewed uh, and the final tip there is is be constantly learning always be learning about stuff because that's the job in a nutshell you go into testing you go into ux you go into um into coding into devops all of these jobs are all centered around a constantly evolving digital landscape and you're always learning new stuff you've always got to be um learning about the next thing uh, so here's my little recap um there's a lot of opportunity in tech yeah, uh, like th there is an incredible amount of opportunity in tech for for really secure, lucrative careers. You know, I don't think there's an industry that's kind of matched uh, uh, right now. Apprenticeships are a really, really good idea, specifically for uh, for tech. You you have a lot of opportunity. You've got a lot of receptive companies who spend a lot of time and effort on their on their apprenticeship programs. 
uh, and you, you know, you're coming out with uh, the opposite of debt. Um, the transferable skills, I keep going on about, but you've got these transferable skills. You need to think about what they are and be ready to, to, to tell people about them. Um, there's loads of resources to, to get started yourself that are free and, uh, and, and that are fun to, to learn. Um, uh, and the last thing is, you know, it's, it's one step at a time. And even if it feels like this is, this is far out of your reach, um, you know, the, the first step is just to take the first step. So that's what I would advise you to do. Thanks. Any questions? Okay, so data analysis uh, apprenticeship is level four. There are other um, data apprenticeships. There's a, a level five um, and there's a level seven, I think. Um, so there's different levels of those and they would, the, the starting salary is dependent on employer. So we're not uh, an employer. We, we have apprentices, but we, we don't... Um, we don't have any data apprentices on our on our team so there's two things that could that could drive what your starting salary was it might be an entry level apprenticeship position that would be of a low salary but may have um you know pay reviews at six months or so it there may be a an existing job that had a higher salary that was uh, in administration or project management or something that then transitioned into uh, into data. So I don't really have uh, I don't really have a, an answer for you. I will tell you that most, uh, in fact, all of the people that we work with, at living wage is the is the lowest that that people pay. And uh, and going back to my point at the beginning of you, you know about you driving your own you know you being your own journey and that you bringing value to the business, that's the, the important thing. And we'll give you support as well to make sure that you understand the value that you're giving and, uh, and can help you uh, monetize that, if you like, and you know, prepare you for having pay reviews and stuff. What was the, uh, what was the other questions? Uh, did, did I get them all? Yeah, yeah. Okay, grand. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? I've got a bit of a question. Yes, Simon. Um, if I was 16, <laughs> should be a bit of a tall order, but if I was 16 and I knew I was vaguely interested in tech, but I didn't know what, you know, artificial intelligence, um, marketing, um, coding, um, cyber security, and to be honest, I'm a bit confused. Where would I look? That's a really good question. Um, I think that, it, it, you know what I think about having a side hustle, having a project or a hobby, what are you going to build or do around that? And where is that going to take you? Because if you, if you have a, so say you have a, a hobby that you run a, a, run a gaming community online. Now there's loads of different things that you could build to help that community. Do you build your own private message board or do you, um, uh, I, I don't know, build mods or stuff and swap them. So there's, it will, your interest in a thing will take you down routes. And I think that when you start to drive your own learning in that way, it pulls you in into things that spark your interest. And that's the, I think the important thing is to do what is interesting to you uh, and then see what sort of careers are, um, are around that area. Because there's so many things I think that we don't, that often we don't appreciate are viable careers you know you can have a career um in in digital marketing and um uh, and pr you don't have to be an instagram influencer for that career to be really real you know like there's loads of other things that you can do around around that that whole influencer culture that aren't just be the influencer you know thank you any other questions for crispin No? Okay, thank you very much, Crispin. Cheers. So that, that concludes this particular session. Um, the next ones are at uh, half past the hour, uh, half past three, and we will have HSBC Bank, who will be talking about how to apply for an apprenticeship and tips for interviewing. Okay, thank you.